Star Wars Episode One Racer. I have never loved a game so much that I am so terrible at. Seriously, I suck at this game, but I couldn't stop playing it when it came out for the N64. I thought it was utterly brilliant. It looked fantastic. It was so liquid smooth, except for when the frame rate stuttered to a near halter on some of the busier sections, but, but that's neither here nor there. It was still a very fun experience, and if you've never played it before, then you can pick it up on the Switch right now, and it's like a remastered version with 60 frames per second, and it just looks brilliant. What are you waiting for? And to be honest, it is far, far superior than many other pod racing games that I'm about to cover later in this list. Grumble, 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 Star Wars, bomb, bad racing, fuck off. Star Wars Episode One: Jedi Power Battles for the PlayStation, Dreamcast, and Game Boy Advance. <sighs> I thought that we were on a good run of video games for the Star Wars franchise, and then this absolute duffer came and plonked itself out on the mat. Fantastic. And it all comes down to the hit detection, because when it came to players taking damage, it was so accurate that it could shoot the fleas off of Chewbacca, but when it came to players dealing the damage, things went so wide of the mark that it felt like somebody else was controlling your character. And if you're going to play this one, do not play the PlayStation version of this. Do yourself a favour and play the Dreamcast version, because at least then you're getting the best of what is, at best, a very mediocre experience. Star Wars Force Commander. Dated graphics. Check. Unintuitive control system. Check. Being so ambitious that we kind of felt bad about it and bought it anyway, that's a goddamn big check, my friends. Star Wars Demolition. <laughs> Vigilante 8 meets Star Wars. This should have been a surefire hit, right? Well, this game had the accuracy of a goddamn stormtrooper. It's a bad miss. Star Wars Episode 1 Obi Wan's Adventures. I can barely even tell what the hell is going on in this game, but then again, not that it matters, because the slow as erosion gameplay meant that my willpower and my batteries had died long before I'd seen anything of interest. But at least we have covered the worst Obi-Wan video game, right guys? Right guys? Star Wars Episode 1 Battle for Naboo. Right, so this, right here, should have been content that the actual Episode 1 film should have included, because it actually showed the meat and bones of what happened on the planet, how things went from being okay to not okay. There was tons of wars going on, and this is a brilliant way of filling it in. Why wasn't this in the film? It was kind of like Rogue Squadron and one part Star Wars Battlefront. It was a great mix, and I'm surprised it doesn't get much more love. Star Wars Starfighter. If there was any video game that I would like to lick, it'd be this. Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. If I could put any game inside of me, it'd be this. Star Wars Super Bombard Racing. If I could wish for any game to be turned into a human so I could set it on fire, it'd be this. Terrible collision detection and controls that feel like you're a brick on ice doth not make a good kart racing game. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. It's Age of Empires, but with Star Wars sprinkled over it. Yes, please. <laughs> Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, Rogue Leader. So how do you make the first Rogue Squadron game even better? Well, first you up the speed to F-Zero levels, then you make it look absolutely liquid smooth, like it was made of melted butter, and then you add in so much immaculate gameplay that every single level remains memorable. That's how you do it. I know it's a pretty big feat, but Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, it knocked it out of the park. Star Wars Obi-Wan. Poodoo! Star Wars Bounty Hunter. You see, Battlefront 2, this is what happens when you actually have a bad guy commit to being bad. Not your story where you just gave up on the Empire after like three missions. This game is brilliant. This game's really, really fun. And who doesn't love being the bad guy using a jetpack to go around and use all these crazy gadgets and taking down people for, for money? Why has this game not had a remaster and a sequel? Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones for the Game Boy Advance. Ooh, shove this one up your exhaust port, THQ. This was absolutely terrible. Star Wars The Clone Wars for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. See Star Wars Demolition? This is what you should have been. Star Wars Racer Revenge. It's basically Episode 1 Pod Racer, but with better graphics, smoother gameplay, and the fact that you now kind of have like a burnout takedown mode where you smash into other players quite a lot and ignore the absolute fragility of what pod racers would actually be in real life. It's brilliant. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. Oh yeah, I like this game a lot. Oh yeah, plus the multiplayer was really dope. Star Wars The New Droid Army. Imagine Diablo, but with a Star Wars paint job. Sounds brilliant, right? 
but now move everything at half speed and take away about half of the enemies as well so you've got nothing to fight on those long slogs. Doesn't sound as good now, does it? Star Wars Galaxies Hey kid, do you want to play a Star Wars MMORPG? Oh boy, do I! Well, here you go, sport. Can I be a Jedi? Sure you can. Oh, awesome. But only if you play the game for like four months straight to unlock it, and then if you die about three times, we'll remove that feature from your profile. Oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. While other games on this list are brilliant, exceptional even, this one might well be the first one to have the title of Perfect. It is that good. This game was born of the Force to lead us to our true destiny of brilliant Star Wars games forever. Right? Star Wars Flight of the Falcon. Well, that didn't fucking last long, did it? Jesus Christ, less of a flight and more of a fucking nosedive. Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. It's Jedi Outcast, but now you can use lightsabers. 10 out of 10. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike. Ah, bless this game. It really shot for the that's no small moon, but unfortunately didn't quite get there. It still landed amongst the stars though, which is good because the main game of this is utterly brilliant. And they tried to innovate by adding in on foot sections. It's just a shame that they were absolute bunk, but there is an absolute super special treat for anyone who bought this game. It comes bundled with a second disc, which allows you to play missions from the other games in two player. Bless this game on its little butt. Nice one, mate. Star Wars Battlefront Classic. Oh my god, by the force this game was good. I cannot express how many hours I've spent to this game and it's galactic conquest mode with my friend Liam. We played this game religiously and found out the most banter way for the Empire to ever win was the fact that if you won enough, you'd build up this sort of like meter and when it got full, you could use the Death Star to destroy a planet, thus removing a multiplayer level from the game. He lost because of the fact that it kept on just simply blowing up every planet. It was brilliant. Ah, oh, God, I missed this game. I played it recently, and without him there, it doesn't feel the same. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Well, take everything that I just said, but better it. Better vehicles, more characters, even the fact that you can play as heroes now. It was just so delicious. I would slurp it up every day. Stone Cold classic of a game. Star Wars Trilogy, Apprentice of the Force. It may have taken them about a decade, but this is probably the closest that we're ever going to get to an easy mode of those NES games. <sighs> Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. Now, if you were to rate this game on like 95% of your playthrough, you would say that this is utter perfection. It took everything that the original game did and even added in more stuff, fixed the very few bugs that the original had and delivered a fantastic and emotionally engaging narrative but that last 5% really took a nosedive because th there was constraints with uh, the developer time and budgets as well, and they had to release the game, and so they had to cut out a ton of content, which meant that you got to the end and you were like, wait a minute, why am I here? How did I get here? Where are my friends? What am I doing? And it does sour the experience just a little bit. But if you can base it on the first half of it, absolutely fantastic. Second half, not so much. Well, not even the second half. It's the, like the 99th percent. That, that's when it starts going a bit downhill. But before I keep, keep on rambling, you can download a mod which somebody has made which has put all of the cut content back in on the PC. Would definitely recommend you doing that. Star Wars Republic Commando. I could bang on and on about how this squad-based shooter is one of the best Star Wars games ever made, but I actually have a more pertinent question. Where the hell is my remaster? Lego Star Wars The Video Game. So here we are, the beginning of an explosion of LEGO video games, and there are so many to cover that I am going to do a bit of a cheeky thing and I'm going to group all of them together into one. And you know why? It's because at their core, the experience is the same, but that experience is utterly delicious. Have you ever had a bad time playing a LEGO Star Wars game? I didn't think so. They're all really fun. Except unless you hate collectathons. But if in that case, what are you doing? Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. This game, much like the film itself, divides the fan base somewhat. On the one hand, you've got intense action, fun lightsaber combat, and a few sneaky cheeky secrets to find, but on the other you've got, um, well, the whole camera being operated by a stubborn drunk thug. If you can get over that, it's a fun time, but uh, if you can't, ooh, you're in for a bad ride. Star Wars Republic Commando Order 66. No, 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 no
Star Wars Empire at War. Ooh, I'd like to change my answer for best Star Wars RTS, please. Star Wars Lethal Alliance. I really want to love this game, but the DS control system does not want to be touched by human hands. What is going on with this? It's just like, it, uh, it makes it a chore to play. If you're going to play this game, pick up the PSP version where they fixed a lot of that and it is so, so much better as a result. Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. It is such a shame that very few people got to experience what is arguably the best that Battlefront 2 has to offer, at least from an expansion mode. Custom characters, tweet gameplay, the ability to morph into one of the devastating heroes in the middle of battle, it all made for a tighter and more frantic experience than ever before. Yes, yes, yes. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Well, I can definitely say that nobody saw this coming. A chance to play as Darth Vader's secret apprentice? I mean, yes, sign me up. I absolutely loved as well that they did some like uh, marketing for this game before any of us actually knew about it when we got to play as the apprentice in the, so in the Soul Calibur games. And I was like, hang about, it's Starkiller. Ah, oh, sick. This game was bloody brilliant. An action spectacle tour to force, as it were. <laughs> pun, pun, pun. Although the um, section where you can bring down the Star Destroyer, uh, yeah, that can, that can drown itself in a lake. Star Wars The Clone Wars Lightsaber Jewels. Oh, God. Well, I mean, I, I guess that it's at least only half an hour long. <laughs> I'm clutching at straws here, guys. Star Wars The Clone Wars Jedi Alliance. I know I critiqued some of the games for being too easy, but this is like baby's first Star Wars game. It is way too easy. Star Wars Clone Wars Adventures. Right, so in another sweeping statement, I'm collecting most of the mobile games that carry the Star Wars banner and basically providing one review for all of them because when you break it down, the experience is kind of the same. They're great games, but with all the best stuff locked away. Star Wars mobile games are particularly stinky in this regard, with having some of even the most basic functions that other titles would call essential locked away behind pay or time walls. So take this big, thick paste of meh and just spread it all over the mobile games as my coverage for them. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Send in the clones. Those emo, primo clones. Send me those soulful and woeful clones by the bowlful clones. They're already here. In a game that actually just wasn't as good as the original and felt like a really cheap cash in. Bit disappointing, isn't it? Star Wars The Old Republic. I honestly couldn't give a single womp rat about the gameplay of this title. I'm blown away by how good those introductory cutscenes were. These should have been short films in their own regard. That being said, as an MMORPG, for a long old time, The Old Republic couldn't really get down what it wanted to be. Thankfully, with tons of support and some great expansions, it is a game that, while not being for everyone, certainly is a brilliant experience for those willing to lose weeks, if not months, of their lives. Connect Star Wars. <laughs> uh, no. Star Wars Battlefront EA. Now don't get me wrong, this looks great and it plays spectacularly, but um, uh, where, where's the rest of it? This was kind of like an entree, this was like a wafer with like caviar and smoked salmon or whatever it is that people eat that's really, really fancy. I don't know, gold, and then it's just a bit, a bit of oil on the top, a crude oil, and then you just eat it and go, hmm, that was tasty, a bit weird, but um, where's the rest of it? This felt more like a proof of concept than a full game to me. Still, in terms of quality of the gameplay, this gets two blaster rifle rounds straight into my eyes. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, I've been looking forward to this one, so let's have a little chat, shall we? Wait, what? Oh, god damn it. In the time it's taken for me to write all of these other Star Wars games, EA and DICE went pedal to the metal in order to make this game actually decent. I mean, sure, no one's going to forget about the loot boxes, or surprise mechanics as I should say, nor the pink Vader comment, nor the most downvoted comment in all of Reddit history, and we will forget about the totally boring campaign that you hyped up so much. But from a gameplay perspective, this is one of the best FPS experiences in the entire franchise. Gunplay is weighty, there are tons of different modes and classes to play as, plus two different different time periods to play through, and some impeccable space combat as well. This game's legacy is kind of akin to Darth Vader. It was imposing and terrible, but underneath it's just an old soul looking for some love. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Jesus Christ EA, where were you keeping this one? This was a brilliantly unexpected title! 
A lot of people call it the Dark Souls of Star Wars, but you know it's definitely more the Dark Horse of the series, coming out of nowhere and completely winning us all over with its delightful characters and story. It's a shame that the publishing giant didn't deem it worthy of much advertisement and seemingly dumped it out onto a tray going, oh, I guess you can have this then, thinking that it was slop that we would just completely throw back in its face, but what it actually had delivered was a Sunday roast with all the trimmings, boom, 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 gravy on top, you know what I'm saying? And number one, Star Wars Squadrons. Again, EA, what are you doing? This game is utterly brilliant. Where were you keeping this one? And in VR, my God, it is unlike anything I have ever experienced. It is sublime. Is this some sort of weird apology for Battlefront 2? Because if so, I'm all for it. Keep apologizing, my friend. Keep dishing these out because these are delicious. Ooh, and there we go, my friends. That was what every Star Wars fan thinks about every Star Wars game. I hope that you enjoyed that in this very long format list, and I hope you had a few laughs along the way. It's been a long journey, indeed it has. But still, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before you go, Whatever you get up to today, I hope that you go out there and use the force to absolutely smash it. You are a massive ledge in my eyes, and you should treat yourself as such, all right? Big love from me to you. Cool. Right, I'll speak to you soon then, guys. Bye!